the way that things are right now is not right and we need to work as a community with the community, with other institutions, with the providers to improve the system overall. When you look at health disparities, you very rarely see the Native American population on that, but when you dig down and you look at the information and the data, they have um, higher substance abuse rates, higher suicide rates, higher diabetes and obesity rates, and the oral health problems are far uh, uh, disparate than any other population. Many people don't realize that in the state of Arizona, uh, dental insurance is not covered under access. A lot of people believe oral health is very important, but it's so it, it's so limited here that they put it at the bottom of the chain because it's so hard to receive help. We still see too many of our young children experiencing tooth decay. 52% of our kindergartners and our most recent statewide survey uh, experienced a decay. And that's uh, above the national average, of, which is about 36%. Arizona suffers from significant disparities. Children from low-income families, as well as children from certain racial and ethnic minority groups suffer from high rates of tooth decay. People are looking at what happens when they don't have care. This horrible tooth pain. They no longer can smile because uh, their teeth are rotten from their methamphetamine use. You know, that we're, they're looking downstream of the negative impact it has. And uh, we're working to look upstream, you know, so that they can look at good oral health in terms of the way they see themselves. The frontline services, the day-to-day, -day, having somebody come in and connecting them to whatever program they need and educating them only goes so far, but there comes a time where the services that are out there, the resources that are out there, just aren't meeting the needs of the population on their own. My goal for the AAIHOI project is to get as many people involved as I can from the 22 nations in the state of Arizona. Um, to have them come together to uh, discuss the, the disparities, their priorities, and how we can really come together, unite, and um, do what we can to help. mission for oral health work this year is to integrate the work into the grassroots programming that we're already doing. Recreating, you know, and reimagining and re-envisioning uh, the way healthcare could uh, incorporate oral health. Here's a part of the oral health town hall series that we're having. This is the first of four. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about health equity. So we're going to have a little discussion about that. of grassroots organizing or grassroots. It's getting people who are impacted by the issue directly involved in the process of changing it. We are intentionally trying to listen to them. We want to listen to them. We want to hear their voices. We want to amplify those voices because for far too long, they as community members don't feel that they're experts, um, but they are the experts. They're, they have the lived experiences and that's what we want to highlight. about an ongoing process, an ongoing conversation where we remove the barriers and the power dynamics that exist between us and the community and invite them to come to us and have a dialogue and let us know what is really necessary. You don't have to lose your teeth. You shouldn't have to think that everybody's just going to have bad oral health, that we can work on finding these solutions together. to have our community uh, take ownership of themselves, their families, and the place in which they live. But it really is about uh, lifting up the voices of people and um, feeling like they can really understand um, uh, and, and articulate a level of care that they deserve. They really feel like there's um, 
that their voices matter, that their input matters, that their level of care should be quality. I think a network approach is so important because uh, complicated issues are never solved by a single entity alone. It really is a collaborative effort that requires multiple players at the table and having that network to support each other, provide resources, um, to link each other with different um, partners is just key to facilitating a collective impact um, on oral health. The last five years we've been working with Dentabust um, funding to promote oral health in the federally qualified health centers and also the PCAs and it really has in that five years gone from a very very soft whisper to a very loud shout. This is the need and we need to meet it and so um, that's that's seeing able to how you can connect everything is the most rewarding but also most difficult part trying to make sure that the right resources are connected to the right people. I hope to see that oral health turns into whole health. I think that the Oral Health 2020 network has really brought um, oral health in all levels, in all spaces, and in all agencies to the table and I'm really grateful to be part of that.